All right, Psalm 80, let's call this one an obscured possession in this psalm that begins in the first three verses with an appeal to, first of all, in verse 1, God, please hear us. In verse 2, God, please save us. And in verse 3, please restore us. A request that's going to come up at least three times in this chapter that is going to go on in the following verses, verses 4 through 6, to ask, how long will you be angry with us, reminiscent of what we saw in the last chapter. It's going to also mention the way in which the discipline that we're enduring or the discipline that Israel is enduring is causing their enemies to laugh. And so once again in verse 7, he's going to make an appeal to God to restore us as he goes on in verses 8 through 11 to say, you brought us into this land, you drove out the inhabitants and cleared it out before us. Uh, therefore, in verses 12 and 13, he's going to say, why then have you broken it down and exposed our defenses or our nation in this way? Making an appeal in verses 14 and 15 for God to turn again to us. And in verse 16, repay the enemies that have exploited the condition in which you have left Israel. But please allow your hand to be on the Son of Man, a term that will later be used to describe the Christ and quite possibly might be referring to him or at least a concept of him now as he is going to conclude by asking God to restore us and save us, reminding me that even though he is three times asking God to restore Israel, there are problems that go along with being restored to a land that they were not able to consistently develop, reminding me of the concept that we have here in the states of adverse possession, where a land that might be in the hands of a title holder, if that title holder does not use the property, a squatter can enter the land and develop it, creating an obscurity as to ownership that should otherwise not exist, reminding me of the concept we mentioned from time to time, and that is opportunity cost. It seems that in this psalm, we are getting a chance to look at the opportunity costs that go along with God's discipline. And so in so far as once again, God is stepping in to correct his people in the way that they are obscuring the example that he is trying to set for all mankind, he is going to, as we said, discipline them the same way he would discipline the nations who might have developed the very same habits, understanding that God is fair. And so in the period during which God disciplined his people by carrying them off into captivity, when they returned from the 70-year captivity, it was going to create a dispute similar to what we would call adverse possession. Can they reconcile who actually owns the land and how are they going to be able to move forward effectively? And that reminds me that as God's people today, even though God is willing to restore us after we either make mistakes or just flat out intentionally do wrong, that restoration can come with an obscurity that never has time to develop when we listen to the ways in which he can simply keep us productive. So my prayer for you is my prayer for me, that even though restoration is a huge blessing, that we allow God to lead us from this point forward in paths of productivity that can avoid the obscurity that goes along with even the blessing of restoration.